Good morning, everyone. My name is Lynette Corona. I am the Healthcare Program Specialist at CDPH's HAI program. I will be your host for today's webinar. Today's webinar is entitled U.S. Antibiotic Awareness Week 2018, Resources for Appropriate Use in Imperial County Healthcare Facilities. Our presenters are Dr. Aaron Epson, the Assistant Chief and Public Health Medical Officer with the HAI program at CDPH. Tracy Lanier, Liaison Infection Preventionist, and Aaron Garcia, AUR Coordinator, also in the HAI program at CDPH. We will wait until the end of the presentation to address any questions to the presenters. Please type your questions by using the chat or Q&A panels, and we will make sure to get to them answered accordingly. You can access these panels by hovering your mouse over the bottom center of the screen, where several icons will appear, and then click on either the chat or Q&A icons to open the panels on your screen. Thank you, and I will now turn the presentation over to Dr. Erin Epson. Thanks, Lynette. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. So the slide here shows the agenda for today's meeting. Um, we're going to start with some welcoming remarks and introductions. I'm going to present briefly on uh, U.S. Antibiotics Awareness Week, which is this week, and our Imperial County Antibiotic Resistance Prevention Collaborative, just a quick overview and recap for anyone who's joining us who hasn't been to any of our meetings before. Then uh, Tracy and Aaron Garcia are going to review some of the resources and the new website that we've developed especially for you all um, at, in our Imperial County Prevention Collaborative. And then we'll discuss some local implementation examples and plans and then go on to discuss next steps. So just by way of welcoming and introductions, I think Lynette covered all of us here um, on the CDPH side. And Lynette, I'm wondering if you can unmute the phones and maybe we can um, hear from those who have joined us. Um, I see a few people from Imperial County Public Health. Um, would either of you like to say hello? And the line are now unmuted at this time. Feel free to uh, un unmute your individual lines if you've muted yourself. Thank you. This is Hi. Dolores from the Nylon Clinic. Hey, welcome. Thank you. This is Mallory from the Imperial County Public Health Department Epidemiology. Mallory. Hello, this is Carla Lopez, also with Imperial County Health Department Epidemiology. This is David from the uh, El Centro Clinic. I'm with Nelly. Wow. Nice to talk to you guys. Is, is that David Kaufman, you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Welcome. I think I see Dan Kang, from also from Clinica de Salud del Pueblo. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm here. This is Dan Kang from the pharmacy at Clinica de Salud. Great. Welcome. And then there's... Somebody else who's joined us, uh, I think just by phone. Yeah, if you're unable to mute yourself or speak, that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> um, well, uh, anyone else that uh, would like to say hello that haven't called out? Okay, hey, well, no worries, and you know, welcome everyone. And we're also recording uh, the, the webinar, so be shared with others. Time. So I'm just really briefly going to talk about our U.S. Antibiotics Awareness Week. Um, so happy Antibiotic Awareness Week to to all of you. Uh, I'm showing here on the uh, WebEx a slide with a couple of screenshots of. Uh, messages, social media messages that we've been disseminating from our California Department of Health account. Uh, and uh, these are messages to sort of raise public awareness about antibiotic resistance and how that is um, uh, caused by uh, antibiotic use and uh, then highlighting the importance of um, appropriate antibiotic use 
and kind of giving public messages about, you know, antibiotics don't work for infections like cold and flu. Um, ask your healthcare professional or pharmacist how to feel better. So we're putting out one message per day uh, throughout this week, and feel free to follow us on Twitter. Uh, we're also posting on our Facebook page. Uh, and these are, of course, being disseminated statewide, but we also are really happy to have partners in um, promoting appropriate antibiotic use and preventing antibiotic resistance on more local or regional levels. And so just by way of recap for anyone who um, might be new to this Imperial County Prevention Collaborative, we're um, really uh, trying to work with um, our local public health partners as well as local um, hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, dialysis centers, outpatient clinics, urgent care, dental clinics, anywhere really that healthcare is provided um, and to uh, promote um, measures to prevent antibiotic resistance. And uh, this is really based on this uh, model where we think that the way to approach antibiotic resistance and prevention of antibiotic resistance is on the local level um, where you know healthcare facilities uh, work together and with public health um, to implement shared um, prevention practices, including antibiotic uh, stewardship or improving antibiotic prescribing, as well as various measures to prevent transmission of um, antibiotic resistance. Our AR Prevention Collaborative, we began convening this um, together with Imperial County uh, back in May. Uh, we're continuing at least through the coming uh, July. We've been holding uh, quarterly learning and discussion sessions in person, and then of course today's is a webinar. Uh, Tracy Lanier, our program's liaison infection preventionist, has been visiting many of the uh, clinic sites uh, to perform infection prevention assessments and uh, providing assistance with developing site-specific action plans to address any gaps. Uh, we've been disseminating guidance and tools and trying to convene opportunities to discuss and share best practices. And then towards the end of the collaborative, we'll have a sort of self-assessment um, process for participants as well. And all of this, was as, all of this activity is with the um, goals and objectives to improve implementation of AR prevention strategies really across that continuum of care um, in that sort of regional coordinated model and implement antibiotic stewardship and infection prevention best practices and really try to improve that uh, coordination of these um, practices when patients or residents kind of transfer or are shared between healthcare facilities. I think many of you know what is antibiotic stewardship, but just to uh, remind us all that these are activities, coordinated activities, to promote and measure appropriate antibiotic use. So making sure that um, patients who are getting antibiotic prescriptions actually have a diagnosis for which an antibiotic is needed, making sure the correct one is selected, uh, making sure the dosing of the antibiotic is appropriate, and um, that the duration of treatment is sufficiently long but um, not longer than necessary. And these are the CDCs, or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's core elements for outpatient antibiotic stewardship. So they've got elements for all the different kinds of healthcare settings. And we're, in this collaborative, we're really trying to focus more on um, outpatient clinics. Uh, we've included these outpatient core elements um, in, our, in our project. And so these include making a commitment to appropriate antibiotic prescribing, taking actions to improve um, practices about antibiotic prescribing in your clinic, somehow tracking and uh, reporting and providing feedback on those um, data to uh, providers, and then uh, sharing and providing expert, uh, education and expertise about antibiotic prescribing. We think this is important because uh, there's a lot of antibiotic prescribing in outpatient settings, and um, at least 30% of the antibiotic courses are thought to be unnecessary, and most of this is for acute respiratory infections, such as acute bronchitis. So there are a few different ways um, to implement actions to promote appropriate antibiotic prescribing um, in outpatient settings, and uh, these are based in part on educational methods, and so um, this is with the idea that antibiotic prescribing decisions are in part, at least based on the provider's knowledge. Um, of when it is appropriate to prescribe, and so there are guidelines and clinical decision support tools. But the thing is, we kind of know that a lot of the 
inappropriate prescribing is really not driven by a knowledge gap. Uh, a lot of providers know that um, antibiotics aren't needed for a cold or acute bronchitis. Um, it's uncomplicated. Uh, and so um, to try to address some of the other sort of more social factors that are leading to inappropriate prescribing, uh, we also have behavioral methods. Um, and, and this is with the idea that, you know, a lot of antibiotic prescribing is actually influenced more by psychosocial factors, you know, uh, feelings of pressure uh, from patients and their, or families, um, feelings like if an antibiotic isn't prescribed, um, the patient might be um, disappointed and perceive that, um, that they're not getting appropriate care and, and so on and so forth. And so that's why we've, um, you know, really tried to focus a little bit more on providing more um, communications training and then um, promoting this concept of um, the providers making sort of a public commitment um, to only a pro, uh, pre prescribe antibiotics when, when necessary. So combining a bit of a patient or family education um, along with uh, sort of a commitment on the part of the provider um, to only prescribe when, when necessary. So with that, I think I'm passing over the presentation to Tracy Lanier, and so I'm going to pass control of the WebEx to you. Oh, it's like Lynette already okay. said that, and then Tracy's going to run through some of the resources that we've um, been working on uh, based on our uh, participants' feedback to um, provide you all. So Tracy, Sounds great. go ahead. Good great. Morning. Yeah, I um, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, this is Tracy Lanier. I'm the, the liaison who's been coming up to visit a lot of your sites. So it's been nice to meet so many different clinics. So far, I believe I've been out to 20 clinics um, of different types. So that's been really exciting. And I'll be contacting some of you who I haven't been out to visit in the next couple of weeks, and hopefully we can schedule um, a meeting so I can come out and do assessments and sort of go through some of the materials that we've reviewed at some of the other visits. But it's been really interesting and very exciting going out and meeting everybody and sort of seeing how everyone's doing. Um, one of the things that I've done during those visits is I've been able to take a look and see what different clinics need. And from that, you've given me some really cool information um, about what you are going to be needing for um, different types of materials. So we provided a number of different materials that were sort of baseline information, and you were really able to share some good information about things that you would like. Um, Aaron Garcia and I are going to be presenting some information about some of those materials. And as Aaron, uh, as Dr. Aaron Espen just said, uh, we actually have made a web page. One of the things that became apparent when I was reviewing information with each of you is that although you like the handout materials that we have for you, many of you actually would like to have access to the originals so you can print them as you need to. So we listened to that and we've put a lot of those on our web page so you'll be able to have access to that. I'm just going to move on to our next slide here. So this is what the web page will look like. At the bottom of the page, you'll see the email address which is actually a link that will take you to the web page. Uh, one of the things I should note for this, this is in the very beginning stages right now. So although some of our materials you will be able to access, at this point we're going to be adding on things as we move along. And uh, you'll probably notice a lot of the materials that you can see on the web page look familiar to you, and it's because a lot of those things are in response to things that you said that you needed. So this is the second page. So when you scroll down on that web page, you'll move into this page. And we've sort of organized this into a couple of different categories. We thought it was important to get information out for patients and their families. And with that, there's a lot of different materials. So you'll see under each of these different categories, you're going to find a number of different resources you can go on to and you can print out. Um, these are available in English and in Spanish. So the antibiotic use information under the first category will have a variety of different things that you can print out to give information to your patients. Um, we're formulating right now, we're working on making a brand new coloring page, which is kind of exciting, um, that you can pass out to kids in the clinics. But that one still um, is still going through the final um, sort of 
reviews. So uh, some of these things you'll see will have notes beside them. When they do come up, when you click on it, you may not be able to access it. There'll be a little note there that'll indicate that. But if you check back periodically on the site, you'll be able to see that these things will become active. Um, also, there's a video here, and we're going to try to um, show that to you later, and it's available in English and Spanish. And this is a great thing that you could really play in your waiting room or if you wanted to do some antibiotic uh, stewardship sort of teaching with your staff or with patients and their families. It's a really nice video. Um, with the resources for healthcare providers, that's exactly what it sounds like. And I'm going to be going through some of those commitment posters. We also have um, obtained some of the educational resources, and we're going to be placing articles. With these articles, again, this is your website as well. And if you find an article that's really great and you want to share that with us, please feel free to do so. We also had handed out copies at our last meeting of some of the prescription tabs that were for symptom relief, and those will be available on the website. Adherence monitoring tools will take you um, on a link to another part of our website, which has a really great number of adherence monitoring tools. If you're not sure what those are, basically, this goes from the sort of basis that when we're looking at practices in the clinical setting, it's really hard to know where our gaps are if we haven't really taken a good look at what's going on. So the adherence monitoring tools lets you sort of look at a really sort of nicely constructed view of what you're doing, and it gives you an idea of what things you may need to work on. Collaborative resources, this is sort of our work in progress right now, and this will be things like our project plan for this program or our timeline, um, different meeting agenda that we've had, and materials that we may have presented at some of these meetings like we're doing right now. So this is where you would find that information. So moving on to the commitment posters, this was really popular uh, when I went out to different sites. And what this was is the original picture that we have where you can actually put a picture of your provider onto the page and they can sign this and it says that they're really committed to only prescribing antibiotics when it's absolutely necessary. And studies have shown that this is actually really effective because the provider is actually making a commitment to doing this. And by signing it and putting that information up, they actually have been quite successful in, in actually doing this. So this is a really uh, great way to sort of share with your, with your patients and your family members that this is something you're really committed to doing and that everybody's working together as a team and we're not ignoring what they're talking about, but we really want to address both the issues that they may be having and that we're also treating them appropriately. You'll notice that this is in English and Spanish now, and this is new. Um, our binational group at CDPH was actually nice enough to translate this for us. So Erin Gersey was able to actually draft up a version in Spanish as well. So this is for the uh, single, single provider one, and it looks very similar to this. And we also have drafted up one that can have multiple providers. So you can actually take this off of the website, insert pictures of your different providers, and they can sign underneath their name. And you can have this up in your clinic and have these printed at your facility. This is kind of nice to have because as you have providers come and go, you can change the pictures or you may have some people who work you know, in certain settings or they may work in specific offices at your clinic and you can adjust. And then we've also are looking at, uh, we've kind of taken the feedback that we got from some of you. And in addition to having multiple providers, when I was out at some of the specific types of clinics, they said, well, these are really great, but I'm a urologist. I don't actually take care of patients or, you know, I deal with cancer patients. I don't deal with patients that are coming in for flu symptoms and things like that. And that's not sort of my primary area of practice. So we've had some of these posters made up to address other areas. So we've got one for urology, oncology. Some of the other areas um, we'll be moving forward with. I believe we were looking at one for OBGYN too. So some of these will address those areas. So on that note, I'm going to be passing the controls over to Erin uh, Garcia, and she's going to be sharing the prescription pad and some of the other materials we've been working on. Uh, 
Um, so what you're seeing here on the screen are what are, we're calling prescription pads. And they're really meant to mimic what it feels like to get like an antibiotic prescription from your physician, except these are for symptom relief for viral illnesses. Um, so these uh, have a list of non-prescription remedies for symptom relief. And it also has some check marks that you can make for different follow-ups um, for when an antibiotic is not needed. So these documents, they're available in both English and Spanish. Uh, the versions that we have will be listed on the website can be either printed one to a page, so you can have a giant like eight and a half by 11 uh, form, or you can shrink them down to size and print two to a page. Kind of, you know, it feels a little bit more like a prescription pad. Um, the other prescription pad that we have is a watchful waiting. Similar to viral prescription pad, um, this is a great resource for providers to give to patients. And this form basically describes home treatment that patients should try for a specific time. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm kind of through here. So you can give um, additional notes and feedback as well. Um, at the bottom there. Again, these ones are available in English and Spanish. You can print it one to a form or two to a form. The other thing I wanted to note is that in the previous slide, so in the commitment forms, um, you could see that there were um, spaces to put facility or uh, uh, logos there at the bottom there. Um, so when you download these forms from our website, you won't actually see it say insert facility logo here. We just wanted you to be able to visualize it, but you will be able to actually insert any logos that you might have. When you hover over the bottom of the, the files, it will say that direction to insert a logo there, and you have the option to insert one or not. Um, or you can, if you have their images that you want to include, you can also insert those there. So they're a little bit customizable, but we also wanted uh, the forms to be standardized. So if uh, patients are going to different clinics, for example, you know, they're getting similar materials, and they could see that, you know, all the clinics are on board, um, the whole community is on board with this. So another one of the items that were requested from these were resources for patients that have more visuals. So the couple of infographics that I'm going to show you um, on this slide and on the next slide, these are taken directly from CDC. They'll be available on our web page as well as on CDC if you search for them. So this first one here is entitled, What is Antibiotic Resistant Bacteria? Um, and then the next one is going over some side effects of antibiotics. And as you can see, there's lots of images here. We think these are great resources because you know it's, it's showing a lot of information with a little information, if that makes sense. Um, so again, these can be printed, downloaded and printed from our website. Um, these can be printed uh, similar to the prescription pads, one to one full page or two to a full page. So you can save some paper or um, even uh, stack the English and the Spanish on the same page. So that's it's customizable in that sense. And then the last resource that we wanted to share were the videos that uh, Tracy uh, mentioned earlier. A lot of clinics requested uh, videos that might be able to be played in the waiting room, for example. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen so I can play a clip. Um, and let's see how this goes. Antibiotics aren't always the answer. You have a cold, or it could be the flu. Whatever it is, you just want to feel better. You head to the doctor to get antibiotics so you can get back to normal life. Not so fast. Antibiotics save lives, but many times they are prescribed when they aren't really needed, and that's a problem. When you're given antibiotics when they aren't needed, they won't help and the side effects could still hurt you. Those side effects can include a rash, dizziness, nausea, diarrhea, yeast infections, and an infection called Clostridium difficile, also called C. difficile or C. diff. Some antibiotics called fluoroquinolone. So that's just a clip from the English version. Again, 
Um, this video is available in both English and Spanish. This can play on a loop, for example, in your waiting room. The links are there on the screen. We'll also um, share these on the website, of course. Uh, so then uh, just to wrap up the resources page, uh, again, Tracy mentioned this uh, before. So th all of the resources that we talked about today will be posted. And uh, as we're continuing to uh, finalize some of, the um, excuse me, uh, some of the materials and translate them into Spanish, we'll let you know when that happens. And we'll post them directly onto the web page so you can access them at any time. But there will also be a collaborative resources section on the web page with any announcements that we have for the collaborative itself. Uh, right now, um, the website's not actually live right now, but as soon as it is, you'll see some of the agendas and slides from our previous session. Um, and then I want to turn it over now to Erin Epson uh, to go over or to lead some discussion, actually. So we're going to get, it is your turn to speak. We're going to have some audience participation. Great. Thank you, Erin. Um, so, Lynette, could you uh, unmute the, the phone lines? I'm not sure if you remuted them in our introductions or not. And currently, the lines are all unmuted. OK, OK. Well, great. So thank you both, Tracy and Erin, um, for going over various resources and the website that um, you know, we have developed for, for Imperial County Collaborative participants to use. Um, we do plan on. Um, eventually transitioning a lot of these materials to sort of public facing web website where you know potentially other other local health departments or clinics in other parts of the state could also access these materials as well. But you know really um, you know in this at this stage, you know, we're trying to pilot and you know get a sense for how um, these can best be um, used and implemented, and um, and I also wanted to thank all of you all who have our participants who've provided feedback on some of the materials as we've been sharing them with you over the last few months. Um, again, you know we've really uh, you know, tried to incorporate um, you know the feedback that you've had about the the materials and uh, provide them here on the website. Uh, I will say that you know if there are um, additional you know, edits that you think are needed, especially for some of the materials um, that you know we've kind of modified, for example, uh, for the specialty clinics or anything like that. Um, you know, please do let us know. We're happy to continue to make tweaks or edits as as we go along. Um, so, uh, with that, I, I you know thought we could just sort of open it up um, to any of you if you have any you know specific reactions to any of the materials that, um, that we've shown. Um, are you using any um, of them uh, you know, already, uh, any of the materials we've you know, shared previously um, in your facility or in your clinic? Uh, and or you know, are you seeing any that we showed um, just a moment ago that will be on the website? Um, are you anticipating using any of those um, in particular? And then, uh, if you'd like to share anything about um, designating, you know, a champion in your um, in your clinic, we kind of talked about this at the last meeting, um, and so uh, you're able to move forward with that uh, identification of a champion. I'd love to hear about that as well. I'll just, I, I guess, pause for a moment um, and see if anyone is. Uh, Brave enough, <laughs> well, it's a small group, so please feel free and comfortable um, chiming in or sharing. But uh, we'd just love to hear from any of you, um, any of your reactions or thoughts about any of these materials. I guess I'll just say one other option as well is um, if you want to, if you're on the WebEx and you want to answer, um, or ask any questions um, just by typing them into the webinar, and um, that's fine too. That's so that I can see. Yeah, so there was a question about getting a link um, to the 
the website um, emailed to you, and uh, yes, we're going to be providing the web page URL to all the participants on the um, slide set, and you know we can share these as well. If you'd like to use the chat or Q&A panels, you can access the panels by hovering your mouse over the bottom center of the screen where several icons will appear, and then click on either the chat or Q&A icons to open the panels onto your screen. So I know you guys mentioned um, that most of this outreach is being done for the, some of the like local clinics. Um, and not the hospitals so much, but where I have seen a lot of um, antibiotic prescription recurring is actually in the hospitals. So I wondered if you guys had any of those materials that you would recommend that maybe we could use to um, pass along to some of our hospital departments. Oh, yeah, certainly. And in fact, actually, you know, we've historically done most of our work around antibiotic stewardship in hospitals. We have a toolkit for hospital antimicrobial stewardship programs um, and a number of uh, specific you know, resources and tools, for instance, like how hospital ASPs can work with their infection prevention staff on addressing um, specific strategies to prevent C. difficile infections, so antibiotic stewardship strategies to address C. difficile. So we do have a fair amount of tools. Are there any um, you know, specific situations or types of, you know, prescribing or that, that, that you've noted to be particularly problematic that you think we could sort of target um, some of? Yeah, well, right now, I know with the start of our flu season, um, I do a lot of the respiratory infection uh, surveillance. So uh, I'm noticing um, just out of the pediatric department alone, there's uh, actually, all of their patients have had uh, antibiotics administered with no no bacterial infection. So these are these are children who are hospitalized with like influenza, with rhinovirus or parainfluenza. So yeah, other respiratory infections, but not. Um, actual bacterial infections. Yeah, so, and in fact, actually, we have um, a few pediatric infectious diseases folks who work here as well and might be able to point to some specific pediatric um, uh, materials for, for this purpose. So these are children who have, like, diagnosed, um, they've done respiratory viral studies and diagnosed in, uh, rhino or paraflu. Yes, yeah. Well, thank you for that that question and feedback. And I imagine many of those children are coming into the clinic, follow up as an outpatient. So, uh, some of them, yeah, that. actually, that's true. Yeah, that does happen often. <laughs> Well, we'll go ahead and, and talk about some next steps. Um, although, if anyone would like to uh, ask another question or if something occurs to you as we're kind of going over these next steps, then uh, please feel free to enter this into the WebEx. Uh, so, um, what we like all of the participants to do is really to um, select, you know, at least one of the antibiotic scribing or stewardship tools from among the ones that, um, you know, we've shown and uh, plan to, hopefully plan to implement um, in, in your clinic, uh, whether that's the commitment posters or video shown in the meeting room or some of the prescription pads. Um, any and or all of the above, uh, we would just um, love to see that implemented and um, be able to, you know, hear about your experience. Um, also, based on the 
visits that uh, Tracy has done in, in many of your clinics. Um, she's included some recommendations for process improvement, and uh, we'd also be interested in sort of hearing about and seeing um, what what you've done, uh, you know, in, in response to any of those recommendations or what 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 your plans are um, with those recommendations and. Um, we'd like to plan on discussing those at the next collaborative meeting. So, and we'd just love to be able to, you know, hear from from you all. I think, you know, this is not only for, you know, for us to sort of hear about, you know, what you've done, but also to share with other um, other participants, other local participants, um, what your experience has been with any of these materials or recommendations, um, so that they can learn from from you and. Um, Provide you feedback on on you know what you know what you're doing and really the goal is to you know see how best this um, these materials or practices um, you know can play, can be implemented you know locally within your your community. Um, so if you haven't had if your clinic hasn't had an on-site assessment, um, Tracy Lanier's email address is on this slide. Contact her to schedule a visit. And then. Um, like everyone to save the date and uh, plan to join us for our next um, collaborative meeting, which we're planning on February 7th of uh, next year. It's already into 2019 um, in the morning from 9:30 to 12:30, located at the Imperial County Public Health Department. The address shown on the slide. Um, and uh, again, you know, we'd really love to, you know, hear from from you all um, at that meeting. We'll also be presenting the sort of aggregate um, information from the infection control assessments and what some of the sort of common recommendations have been. Um, but you know, really would especially love to hear from from you all and we facilitate some discussion um, amongst um, all of our participants about you know how things are going. Implementation. That uh, have all of our email addresses on this slide. Um, if and there are any questions, and again, um, you can enter them on the Q and A on the webinar or email us afterwards. And then um, we're recording this, so this can be available to additional folks who didn't get a chance to join us, or who might have joined a little late, or. Um, uh, sharing with any of our collaborative participants. So, thank you. Erin, it's Tracy. Can I just add one thing, too? Oh, please, um, yeah. With all of the clinics, I noticed that they've been really great representing, having one representative come out from each set of sort of corporate clinics. And for the next meeting, we'd really love to see one person from each clinic because we'll actually be going over the data. It'll be, like Erin said, it'll be aggregate, but it'll be nice to sort of see how everybody's doing in your entire system, and this is a really great way to sort of see. You'll know what your results were, but everybody else won't know, but they'll be added in with all of the other results for the county. So it'll be a really nice way to sort of see how you're doing and different things that different clinics are doing, and the more people that we have from different clinics, the better, because. If you can believe it, um, even though a lot of you are following the same policies within a system, you may be doing them quite differently. And I think that that's kind of a nice takeaway from going and visiting everyone is some of the groups in the, you might be doing something at your clinic that is much better than what the other clinics are doing. And this is a really great opportunity to sort of share those practices. And likewise, there might be something that you're having a problem with, and you're coming down the road, you may not know they actually have the solution to that problem. So this is a really great opportunity for everybody to share those types of experiences together. Thank you, Tracy. That's a great point. And yes, we would definitely like to many as many um, providers as, as possible in these meetings. And I think, yes, the more the the more the merrier, the more the better um, is and feedback can be exchanged. Comments? Can we close it out, uh, Lynette, or? Sure. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, the presenters, for today's informative presentation. 
A copy of the slides and materials will be shared via the email distribution list and the Imperial County webpage shortly. This now concludes our webinar. Have a pleasant afternoon. Everyone, and see you next week.